next take it away for the your presentation or your talk about <laughs> MW stake. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's always a bumpy start with me. Uh, what you see here is the digest of the last three days of the thoughts that I came up with throughout the conference. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the uh, MediaWiki stakeholders group. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, Sabine helps me here. We're yin and yang when it comes to presenting stuff. Uh, Sabine will correct me whenever you think it's totally not understandable. And of course, in the end, we all build on Cindy, who is not here yet, but um, she's also part of the uh, MW stakeholder group. So this is the vision. Of this group, this is from an end point and an end user's point of view, whether it's administrator or actually an average, you know, just a wiki user. And these would be the typical questions that we as a community would find or have to find and provide answers to. Uh, the other main topic I want to address or based on this is actually how do we organize and coordinate our contribution as a community? Because I think we're not leveraging and maximizing the potential we have uh, among all these wonderful people here online and in the world. Um, let's very briefly go through a chain of thought. Let's say we are a Semantic Media Wiki community that consists of members. These are we, uh, we all, and we provide services to customers. We break it down on one level. We could say we use a commodity package, which would be SMW is actually a commodity package. And then we can build on that and provide, for example, an extension like page exchange or page sync, which both address uh, the concern of exchanging pages or content. And like that, we provide a service. Mm -hmm. Now, I wanted to actually trigger this talk with a provoking question or actually comment. So the other day, or actually yesterday, we found this restaurant uh, just around the corner, which I really recommend to you because it features the new Mealy W240 dishwasher. I tell you, I have never seen clean dishes like yesterday. I really recommend you to go to that restaurant. Now, this is a strange statement, isn't it? What about the following statement? We found this, um, this restaurant and we had the most amazing mac and cheese with a Dutch touch. Now, this statement makes sense, right? So the dishwasher mm -hmm. is a commodity package. But the mac and cheese with the Dutch touch is a member package. But of course, the plate that this Dutch touch mac and cheese is served with is based on the dishwasher service. So the, uh, for a restaurant's point of view, and let's go into this analogy, with a dishwasher, you want to minimize cost because it's not a competitive factor, right? So you just want to make sure you absolutely minimize cost in terms of money, time, uh, nerves, spent, and so on, because the quality is important provided by this. So you want to maximize the quality because if you serve your food on um, dirty dishes, this is going to harm everything that comes down the street. When it comes to mac and cheese, the Dutch touch, you want to actually maximize the value, which then maximizes your revenue. So this is actually where you should focus on in your daily work. So the idea is to identify which services, packages, software, methodologies, methods, approaches, ideas, argumentations, we as a community use every day that identify themselves actually being a commodity. Backing up a wiki is a commodity. You cannot say, I back it up in a better way than these guys. That doesn't make sense. And very briefly, a, uh, oh no, let's, let's go into that a little bit later. Sorry, as I said, it's a bumpy road at, at the beginning, but it will smoothen out. 
Now, I talked to this to Alexander Gesim, actually on the first day of the conference, about this entire setup, like using, making maximal, maximum use of commodity packages, community Mac packages, and just focusing on, on your, your, your member packages or your extensions or the functionality you want to add. And he, some, he said the crucial aspect that we have to deal with. He said, I am very willing to use all your community aspects and actually could to contribute back until I'm slowed down. The moment I'm slowed down, I will give one chance to the community to fix it. And if you can't fix it in one go, I'll divert. This is human, because imagine you bring your car to a service station, they mess up with the work, you give it one more chance, if you're a nice person, right? Otherwise, you just divert directly. So the question is, how do we um, manage these, these community packages with regard to the member packages? Actually, everything sort of boils down to MISI, which is mutually exclusive, connectively exhaustive. So we want to have the entire service universe we use boil, uh, broken down into um, reusable modules or uh, packages that are either, when they're actually something like backup, are managed by the community, and then we just add the ones where we actually, you know, uh, focus on our innovation or, or on our distinguishing distinguishing focusing. That's actually one way I want to um, distinguish these two swim lanes, right? One is a consolidating cooperation. So we cooperate to consolidate uh, things, aspects, software, modules, and so on, and we have a distinguishing focus. And the very crucial thing here is not to stifle innovation. That's, that's, that's the balance, right? Because that's the danger. If you insist on standards, you might just kill innovation. And we must have a, a valve, a way to deal with someone who comes up with a better way. So if we take page exchange, and I'm, I'm using, let's say, content moving, you know, to take a, an abstract term, not going into the brand terms we actually have, if there's a, like, let's say today, uh, right now we have page sync and page exchange. Maybe there's a third product on the horizon that, that will carve out something that's even better. And then we need a political process to actually deal with that. So that would be it for here for the moment. Now, how could the political uh, process look like? And I wanted to and this is terrible to actually understand, but I try to explain it. Let's take the example of SSH. You know, SSH as a technology to actually remotely connect to a computer. That is obviously a industry standard. And the quality is very good because it's, it's used billions of times per day around the world. However, SSH was optimized for wired connections. So there was some shortcomings when it was dealing with mobile connections that were sort of a little shaky. So someone came up with Mosh, which is a, a mobile shell. But the fact is Mosh is actually piggybacking on SSH. It's not something completely new. So the idea would be that if someone uses a commodity package from our community for any aspect, and we identify something that is, is missing, the shortcoming, instead of just forking everything or starting with something completely new, we could negotiate a process where we add the M to SSH to create MOSH in, you know, So, um, yeah, the idea would be that we um, sort of manage a, a political process to get this going, and then we identify contributions that can come from member packages back into these, uh, into these community packages. Now, this is what I would call the contribution. Now, what are the benefits of that? 
There's obviously like things like lift all boats, right? Or enlarge the lake or the cake, whatever you want to take the boats is the cake. Then it frees resources to innovate. Imagine if you had to set up your computer every day. There's not a lot of time to actually write, you know, anything useful if you just spend half your day doing things that you could take out of a, of a community package. Then it reduces stress because you rely, you know, SSH is a very non-stressful uh, software because you trust it. It's very high trust in it. And this is a, one of our projects that we'd like to establish as a TWOC, which means trusted web of colleagues. Because we are all small players. I'd say, you know, small with regard to Google, I mean, for example, my wiki is, is a larger entity. I'm a very small entity. You are a rather small entity. Uh, Wikibase Solutions is a larger entity and so on. But imagine if our cooperation was to 80% so standardized that I could hand over some tasks to someone else in a standard, standardized way, much like uh, a normal telecommunication company provides the technology and the end devices to use a phone system, but you have to hire an electrician to actually install it. So in our case, it's Swisscom doesn't do installations. You have to hire someone. And those electricians are interchangeable because they, they, they benefit from the same um, uh, specification. So here the idea would be that, but of course, to have something like that and a trusted web of colleagues would be that they all work more or less under the same paradigm and, 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 and the same ideas. That also reduces stress because if you are the only person who really knows how your customer installations work, there's no holidays, there's no sleep, there's nothing. Unless your SLA means response time is one month but then that's problematic today. So that would um, maximize the quality because you can actually you know, distribute it onto more shoulders and that will increase your revenue or it would in, in this uh, scenario. So that would be the, the political motivation behind it. Now, how could it be managed? We suggest to set up something like this or base everything into the uh, MediaWiki stakeholder group and establish a UN general secretary role. Like here we would call it community services coordinator. There is no power in this other than settling disputes, trying to consolidate concerns, um, figure out interface and negotiate interfaces, protocols, cooperation boundaries, and so on. And imagine that Alexander is working on something, figures out that he's bumping into an obstacle here. And it would be this MW stake general secretary that he could contact and say, please, there's an issue with that package. Can we find, did you have, do you know already who would be concerned, who to contact? And then we would have some, someone in our community that negotiates that and actually moderates it, right? <laughs> um, of course, this has to do a lot with politics, which is difficult in itself, but you know, we have to deal it at the end of the day. And we've been talking about that for six years now. I mean, all of these ideas are not new. They're, they, they are just, I'd like to, again, uh, come up with a, an initiative to, to start that. So two artifacts that I've compiled uh, already for that. Can you show the map quick? There's a very funny story with this map. That's the third. I'm sure Ad recognizes this because I, when I organized the... <laughs> When I organized the SMWCon in Paris, I actually showed this and Art came up to me after the presentation and he said, Lex, very smart, looks really good, but I tell you, no one's interested. And I said, Art, I know you're right. I, and you said it in a very charming way. And, and I know you're right. 
right? Because, and also, you know, um, Bernard came up to me and said, it feels cumbersome. You know, he said he, he gave it another chance because once we on an, at an online meeting, right, we're talking about that. And I said, well, here you have something. And he said, yeah, but OK, if I want to put something into this uh, nomenclature or whatever, it, it, it's cumbersome. Fine. But it's just a suggestion. But, you know, the funny thing is we are we all here are about structured data, right? Everybody's constantly talking about structured data. So why then? Are we struggling with something like this? And again, I'm not saying this is the solution. I'm just saying this is the approach. And imagine a trusted web of colleagues. You could say, I've got an MA1 problem. So then you can say, are you qualified for SE0? No, but you are for SE2 because you can deal with, the, for example, Elasticsearch, Neo4j, uh, all these services, but you're not necessarily proficient in actually setting it up in terms of the MediaWiki side. So that is, that's one thing. Then uh, another one would be in terms of communication. Uh, can we go to the, the, uh, the, sec no, the fourth one? Um, this is also not the first and it will not be the last approach and intent here. That would be to document the use cases for functionality that we provide through extensions. What I miss, actually, is when I look at extensions are screenshots. Sometimes it's very cumbersome to figure out what, what is it actually doing. And I have to set it up and so on. And, you know, that is nowadays I would be happy if there was a way to just take a glimpse at a couple of screenshots and then back, you know, what it's actually about. So what I came up with, you know, Cypress maybe, Cypress is like Capybara, it's, it's a JavaScript driven end-to-end um, -end testing framework. It's the simplest to use, that's why I actually chose it. So there's four things I'd like to show you. One is Doc for Humans. Can I have a look yeah. at it? Uh, yeah. Yes, you can already. So you just here. yeah. Now, if you hover over screenshot, no, no don't click there. Wait. We'll take you. <laughs> and again, you know, and, and by the way, my design skills are absolutely ah. terrible, right? <laughs> just say okay. Just just stay there. Yeah. So the idea would be that, and this is fully automatically produced. So you have, and we're going to have a look at uh, how you specify the interaction steps. But this is, uh, in my case now here, I did it for my extensions. You can just run Cypress and it will publish this uh, HTML doc for humans, including these um, screenshots. They're automatically taken. And the idea would be we have one aspect. EPO stands for every page is page one which is a special way or philosophy to organize uh, instructional content on the web. Uh, but for example, it should list all EPO aspects. So that would be a use case. It allows a user to add an instant of an EPO topic type and so on. And we would um, distinguish the actions. So do, then we would have go to if you have to change the page, uh, and then the screenshots wherever we, we, we come across them. Again, design is terrible, and we can talk about the naming and everything. It's just the, 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 the system. Now, if we go to the uh, commands for human, that must be the next. OK. Uh, no? No, not that one. Let me see. Commands for humans. This one. Exactly. Again, this is a super rudimentary catalog of interactions you can do with the wiki in fact with any web page but we have to tailor it to the wiki now there's not a million ways you can do things on the wiki normally you can click on things normally you can type into things or you can drag things you know these are these are it's a small set of interactions so imagine here we have Media wiki login page form cancel page form save page page form add a property and then the, um, the arguments that, that get into that. So the idea would be we provide a platform where we have a set of interaction 
commands that we can compile our documentation with. And now if we go to documentation for computers, that would be the... Oh, this one. Yeah, this is how, can you, can you enlarge that? So without being fully proficient in, you know, JavaScript end-to-end -end testing with Cypress, I tried to boil it down to the bare necessity. So this would be the way you describe how to list EPO aspects. And you can see there, now the, all the purple things represent the commands we had in the first place. So we'd have media wiki login, visit, click header tab, take screenshots, and so on. This is runnable by the computer. So GitHub, upon every single uh, commit, could run that. And now the fourth aspect. Mm. That one, this is where you actually translate the human command into the computer command. Because there it all boils down to this, you know, where you have to actually use, um, what is it, element by ID and all that stuff. And the idea is to shield the extension developer from this, right? So we, as a, as a community, as this MW stake, Holder group would provide those translations. And then we would have per um, extension these, uh, these explanations. Can you go, what, what the, can you back, go back to the PDF quick, please? Yeah, if you go to the, the uh, lower, um, yeah. Okay, I mean, you get the idea, right? The, the idea would be that we have an, an, an automated or semi-automated, generalized, standardized way of, of describing the functionality. And now uh, we could have it actually interactive. Uh, we could turn to interactivity here because I'd like to collect thoughts on any components or building blocks that we need to satisfy our interest and actually put them in either of those in, in one of those two areas as we heard before we have the consolidating cooperation commodity components like install upgrade and backup no one will gain a competitive advantage if you can install upgrade or backup a wiki it's like an airbag in a car. It's standard, right? It's, there's no way to, uh, to distinguish yourself. However, your templates, your forms, your integration, your elastic search mappings, your search in general would actually would help that, would, would allow you to distinguish yourself. And that acronym there, which is terrible, but that stands for a new truth is born as a heresy and dies as a banality. That's in general uh, in the world. So what that means is someone of us comes up with a new set of functionality <laughs> that of course at the beginning is innovative, new, maybe even a heresy because it will be, we've never done it like that. You know, we used stylus before 2007 until Steve Jobs got rid of it. And his engineers told him, you know, you can't get rid of the keyboard. Well, it was a heresy. Now, if you ask a five-year-old, look, what is, he doesn't even know what the keyboard is for on a mobile phone. So that is, it was pushed down into, into a general truth. So the idea would be to find aspects. Um, yeah, I, I, I would be interested in hearing your suggestions what you would uh, suggest to put into these two areas. And then uh, over the next months until the next uh, conference, I would take care of uh, establishing the political processes to actually deal with that in the sense of this interest and make sure that we can help Alexander without, you know, shying him away by just slowing him down.
So that would be, uh, that was the general presentation. Thank you. And of course, I'm, I'm eager to, to hear what you think. You know, is this, uh, it might be naive, you know, as, as Art said five years ago, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it was inspiring, you know, that everything is inspiring. Yes? Yeah. The whole, you can paint, you can draw, you can do whatever you like. That's true. Yeah, thanks a lot for uh, yeah, all these ideas, really great ideas. Um, just to add some comments. So, if you look at other communities um, like yeah, Jupiter, Jupiter Hub, where you can Put a notebook on Git, and you can spin down Jupyter notebook environment, and directly you are into it. You can play around with the code, and and I mean we have some kind of of this the, all this definition we need for extensions. For example, we have all the dependencies and stuff, and we have also this great work on yeah on simplifying yeah the creation of Docker images. For specific configuration and if you have at least some resources in the background where we can launch this docker images at least temporarily maybe for half an hour just somebody can push a button it spins up it shows how the extension works you can decide is there something or not and if he leaves it it's yeah it's the container stopped and the resources are free again so we do not need a, a large amount of servers to do that um, because, um, and then you can also use this infrastructure, for example, to create the audit documentation. And also, I mean, there's also this extension um, guided tours. I mean, it not only it's about developers understanding what a system can do, but if you have a new extension to your system for your customers, you need to explain them. And I mean, this testing framework also make some actions and guides through, through the, um, the pages and forms and buttons and events. And the guided tour extension is all, it's, yeah, it's comparable, but it's, it makes some, yeah, tours through the wiki, but it also navigates maybe, it, it highlights something, but it could also maybe combine both approaches because you need to set anchor points and define actions. Yeah. So of course that is very, that's more advanced, but Auto documentation, auto auto guided tools, and ready to spin up um, demo environments um, that build out that build automatically. But you mentioned something really important: is the anchor points, uh, because of course this whole reuse reusing of commands, as I showed, you know, in Cypress, that depends on actually using class names or IDs or tag names. That, that are recognized. But you know, a tag name or a class name is in fact a commodity. You will never win a customer by saying, I have the most beautiful cascading style sheet class names you can imagine. That doesn't make sense. So if even if I if I think it's it's wrong or it's not nice, I can I can live with it, you know. And um, so that's a yeah. I say something. Yeah, but yours, yours. Oh. Yeah, no, no, as Simon, stay here because yeah, stay, that, stay. That, that's not perfect mesh. And you mentioned me name also. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> the thing is, I'm, you're absolutely right. This it would be perfect to just have the Docker for each extension. And we came up with more or less the same idea a few months ago. And we, I think we made it already with a few extensions, at least the ones we maintain, because that's what you say. <clears throat> just want to try it out without any. Oh, I do have the media wiki available and stuff. We just run the container and done. And this comes to the other point where you said, when I'm slowed down, what does that mean? I mean, we contribute more or less, sometimes here, sometimes there. The thing is, uh, contribution is nice, but if you're not uh, in the position where you can approve your own pull request, then you need to wait for someone to make a review. So pull requests are really super, super important. Also getting new developers onboarded. But if a pull request got stuck then for several months, then yeah, 
this probably dies. Uh, we, I have tons of examples where <coughs> also uh, uh, contributions to core to support display title in the auto suggest, for example, it died. It was never merchable again. Uh, and then it's gone, pushed, lost. Um, so the crucial thing here, so key technology, let's say like this is Docker, because you can use it to showcase the extension and you can use it with continuous integration. We need to have all repos with CI processes because as a review, I'll say we maintain some extensions and we get now and then pull requests. And if you don't have coverage and if you don't have continuous integration, it takes you sometimes a few minutes to review the thing and check it. If it's complex, then it takes you two hours, three hours, you're slowed down. I cannot put hours uh, into just reviewing the thing. And hopefully I understand what's meant, depends on who made the pull request. So CI is crucial, yep. Docker is yeah, crucial. But currently that. maybe CI is not um, a commodity because if you yeah. do it better, then maybe your software is better, but we all rely on stuff from others. And there's, if yeah. there's no CI, you all fail, we all die the same there's maybe because we rely on the same extensions that we yeah. not maintain our own. So maybe CI should be a commodity. And I will never co contribute back to Garrett hosted uh, <laughs> repos. I, I don't do it anymore. I mean, the process with Garrett and stuff is, is okay for the foundation, I would say. But if you have, let's say, uh, normal or non-foundation developers, <laughs> it's, it's really, I mean, uh, Whoever worked with GitHub and GitLab, it's super easy. And you can, of course, easily change the CI process itself. And that's super important. So Garrett is a no-go for me. So uh, extensions that are on Garrett, I will never contribute faster. That's simple like this. I'm not sure if I'm the only one. Uh, but yeah, that's what I said. This, this is Slow recorded, down. right? <laughs> because <laughs> this, faster, you right? see, this is my first task as the general secretary is actually now we've got two member states fighting over some aspect or oh, no not, not fighting fight. exactly no, no, we so agree. Just, no <laughs> exactly so we're consolidating it and i would it would see it as my task now to boil it down into a set of actions that we can agree upon yeah, yeah. Don't get CI. yeah but just to add one yeah i mean <laughs> auto documentation auto tutorials and of course yeah of course testing of course yeah. i mean that's the most important thing and yeah. And all in the same environment. Are you going to share something or not? So we're all on the same side, on the good side. Power. <laughs> yeah, you're not sharing anymore. I know that I'm not. I'm not sure if you need. I'll operate. No, 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 you have to stay up. There are actually comments also from virtual participants, I don't know when or where to get yeah. Do you want to do this first? Or? I don't know. No, Cindy, <laughs> so do, do, do your, and then we... Yeah, but I have so many thoughts. Well, <laughs> yours, it's yours. Um, the first um, comment I wanted to make, and I think this stuff is great, and I'm glad that we're having this conversation. We need to have this conversation, and not only have this conversation, but we need to take action. We need to move forward and actually um, implement this. And um, the question is how? And the question, and then we do have to have negotiations about um, things like Garrett. Uh, so the comment about one container per extension, I was just going to say that what was occurring to me is that while there are extensions certainly that by themselves bring interesting value, very seldom do we have wiki wikis that run only a single extension. And often the value is provided by combinations of extensions working together. Um, and not only that, because we do the more than one thing, we need to make sure that our extensions work together. So compatibility of extensions. I love this idea of being able to spin up on demand a Docker container that has that you can play with an extension. Um, I would love to see it where you could actually say, I want to spin up a Docker container that has these three extensions and then experiment with them. 
um, live. I think that would be an amazing capability. Um, I'm sad whenever I hear people say I will never contribute to Garrett. Um, not because I particularly love Garrett. Um, I struggled with it in the beginning as well. Um, but I do think that there is power in having the um, extensions hosted on a platform where we've got the full CI against um, Core Media Wiki um, and where we have a consistent set of tests that are run um, every time you merge a change and extension. Um, there is the ongoing effort to move um, from Garrett to GitLab. Um, the timeline is, is unclear or maybe not unclear, but it's, it's, it's taking a while. Um, and there will definitely be changes in um, how <laughs> extensions are managed and how CI is done. But I think getting into that process early and having input on how, um, as third-party extension developers, we would like to have our extensions maintained in the new GitLab infrastructure mm -hmm. and trying to make a concerted effort to make sure that we can be in a single um, environment um, with consistent CI that can test against multiple media wiki versions and um, test extensions in different um, configure, um, combinations, configurations. Um, that's something I think that it would be great for our community to get involved in now to make sure that the eventual um, direction of GitLab. You know, there are certain th things we all know that are difficult about Garrett for maintaining third-party extensions. I keep all of my extensions on Garrett um, because I do see the value of having that um, consistent CI. Um, and I have learned how to live in the Garrett environment. And there are certain things that I can now do very easily, like stacking patches that I understand are going to be more challenging in the GitLab environment. Um, but, um, you know, there's certain benefits as well, and certainly living in that same ecosystem with um, MediaWiki is powerful. So I would like to see, and, and because um, the third party community, I think, didn't have a voice necessarily or, or a uniform voice in um, some of the policies on Garrett, I would like to see that, that um, so there are some things that are very hard to manage, like, for example, um, I know there have been requests in the past to be able to have testing branches and, um, you know, in, in development branches that you're testing against um, rather than core um, or rather than the release branch. So now is the time to, um, for us to decide what's important to us as far as support in the GitLab environment and to try and influence the direction um, of support for third-party extensions in that GitLab environment so that we can live in the same environment rather than having this dichotomy of you know, some stuff living in Garrett, some stuff living on GitHub, some GitLab, and whoever, who knows where else. So. I think that's Thank it. you. Did very briefly, one comment. Um, I'm currently uh, developing the new MW stake org. Can you quickly show? Is that too difficult to? Or is it? Let's see. Um, uh, you want the, the old one? The, the projects and issues. Oh, okay. Projects and issues. So that is that is still under construction. Um, because there's, there's the existing MW stake org, and I'm refurbishing it into a new one and actually basing it on Canasta, of course, uh, using all because we want to eat our own dog food, right? Um, so the project, you have a short, and sorry, this is not really accessible yet. It's just to show you that there's some, I put my money where my mouth is, and there's some flesh on the bones already. So we would have uh, extension. Pro extension templates um, that would be you know come up there's this boilerplate extension that is used as a as a as a blueprint so that would to take care of that um, in our interest uh, certified extensions that's also something we've been dealing or discussing for for a very long time um, 
yeah, let's, let's leave that. The other one is uh, issues. And the issues are not necessarily technical issues, but more community organizational issues. Like, for example, this discussion that you just triggered, I would like to have one page here where this is, and it's, it is, I, I would be the janitor of that discussion, which just means not to censor it, but just to clean it out and, and make it easy to understand what, what, what the individual stances are. Because otherwise you've got a, uh, it's difficult to, uh, to, uh, to grab them quickly. But so these would be two aspects, the projects, the community projects, and the community issues. Okay, so what would be the questions okay. online? Uh, I'm just going to read out. I will not come up because people online can read it in the chat anyway, so it's just really for the people in the room. First comment was from, from Brian uh, a while ago. He, he says, democracy seems to run best with informed voters. So how do you propose we inform our community about the options out there for media wiki so we can congregate around existing community standards and help to create the best new standards? It sounds like this is the role of the new position community moderator you are proposing. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Not that I have a full answer now. Yeah. But yeah. Yaron says, uh, tied in with that, what would be the outcome of such votes? An official list of recommendations? Um, you remember the discussion when I, you know what I want to refer back to. Remember when I when I talked to you two and I I wanted to suggest something like best practices, and the two of you weren't really fond of that idea. Remember, because you said <laughs> you said our our task would be to to you know remain uh, objective and 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 show all the options. Yeah. Of course, that's fine, and, and I, I'll try to do that. But the interest would also be to vet a little bit for um, for the community, because I remember my knee surgery when my anesthesiologist asked me, you know, what what option do you want? I said, look, I didn't study it, right? I'm your patient. You've got my anamnesis, so you are the specialist. You decide. And he said, you're one of my most lovely patients I've ever had. <laughs> because they, they, because you've got these cyber conjurers, right, who actually read up on the internet. Well, that's dangerous, and you have to do it. And he says, you know, I studied it, right? You know? So that's what I mean. So to some extent, I'd like to, yeah, to, of course, carve out the best practice. But, but as everything, this is up to vote. And I'm actually suggesting that we re-elect that person, let's say, once a year or every two years or when it's necessary or whatever. But it's just, um, yeah. OK, and then we have some comments that are, I think, more technical from Gregory. He says, there was a discussion recently online clarifying that it is possible to change CI in Garrett, but it's not generally known how to do it or who to ask. And then he also comments that Cyprus is used by some groups in Wikimedia Foundation. It was reviewed as a possibility possibly the next test framework by a Google Summer of Code contributor, but the initiative lost traction after that effort was over and there's a, a fabricated task for that. Uh, and he says, early blocker in Cyprus was due to a very outdated version. And then Thomas uh, reacts to Cindy's comment earlier, uh, isn't it preferable to have the codes hosted on a platform owned by a charitable organization like Garrett rather than by a limited company, at least for projects in the media ecosystem. So again, we have this discussion, you know. Uh, uh, and then, oh, it goes, it goes on. Greg says, uh, quote, you can create whatever CI you want for Garrett powered by Jenkins. You just need to make a patch against the list of Jenkins jobs. The job can be whatever you want, get it merged, and then trigger it from whatever your Garrett repo is. You can self-merge these things as the configuration for jobs is in a single shared repository, and this barrier is most people's problems with uh, changing on Garrett. Continue. So I think this is just a, a quote from the, um, uh, from the task. And then he says, technically and socially, it's all possible, just more effort in making a GitHub repo and the GitHub actions file. And then there are some more links. So this is the current state of discussion online. OK. <coughs> Yeah. Any other 
input comment correction. I'll come here not to intimidate you, but to be uh, uh, a on, bit the, on the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you you really uh, in, uh, make me curious about uh, what I call software, uh, or no, not just software, but patterns, uh, like best practices, patterns, whatever. Uh, if we have just one solution for, for instance, installing, uh, I'm wondering about our own practice. And I can see that there are, uh, it's just an instance, but uh, we have a farm and uh, others have uh, Docker containers that they install on premise. We, we have as well. Um, so can you see that we get just slight deviations of solutions for particular use cases? You're asking about my own solutions that I have. No, uh, have. Can, you, can you see, can you imagine that we uh, create a pattern uh, for installing and deploying uh, uh, MediaWiki, but then uh, having variations of that for the specific uh, yeah, the question is whether they could build, uh, you know, on each other, uh, or do, are they true forks, or are they completely different? Because I remember, you know, when I got to know Jeffrey, I had my MediaWiki, what was it, command line interface builder stuff. Uh, first of all, he trashed my set commands, which the next morning I, duh, 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 duh. no, he was absolutely right, but I was so immersed then I was fascinated by it, and he just ah. said it's not a good idea. And then I said, yeah, that's true. So, and I, uh, I actually got rid of the whole thing, and I'm, I'm fully cooperating with Canasta because the, we 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 have the same goal, right? It's and it's a commodity, it's a complete mm -hmm. commodity. My customers don't care how something is set up or as long as it works. So it's a commodity. So I rather flock to uh, to Canasta. I remember about three years ago, I, I suggested this flock to Meza, because then we didn't have it. It wasn't even Dockerized at that time. I think it was it was purely Meza, and uh, but then the whole Docker thing came along, and now yeah, I'm. For me personally, I will stick to Canasta at the moment. Yeah, maybe my example is bad, but I assumed Canasta maybe is only applicable to certain situations. And in a situation where you have a uh, sure. premise, is it's better to use Canasta. And if you have a farm, it creates redundancies. And yeah. you have, or, or uh, if you have it in clouds, th there's way too much overhead, uh, things like that. And then I can imagine that there are different solutions to infect different problems. Of the sure. Paper. And the idea would be actually to to reshuffle the solutions until we've got a MEC setup, right? Mm -hmm. um, of course, MEC in the real world is almost impossible, What's but it's mutually exclusive, collectively exhaustive. So you've got no redundancy, no overlap, but you're still covering everything, which would be the ideal world, right? But in, in the nature is not set up like that. Actually, there's a lot of redundancy in, in, in nature. But it adds to complexity and so on. But yeah, it would still serve as the beacon at the horizon, you know. And we can carve them out. It means that that's what I mean. We have to make sure we don't stifle innovation. If someone really comes up and says, "Look, the way Canasta handles Kubernetes is really not ideal for this case," okay. But then just instead of staying silent and part ways. We could then contact this general secretary position and say, let's try to reconcile our position and save, you know, as I said, you know, minimize the cost. This is about minimizing cost. And then we can, uh, we can uh, mm -hmm. concentrate on maximizing the value in, in more productive ways. Yeah, I don't think anyone disagrees with minimizing cost <laughs> yeah. uh, in, in that regard. Yeah, but the, the exclusivity versus inclusivity of solutions that it's tricky, I know. Probably I know. an ongoing process. Yeah, of course. Of course. But it's a process that we might really want to tackle that. No? We have to start somewhere. Exactly. Okay. Good, we're in time, I think. Also, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lex. You're welcome.